Good day to you and welcome back to the channel. Today I just want to talk. I just want to sit here and drink this coffee and have my reloading manual here sitting next to me and just talk to you guys about cartridges. I find it fun to talk about rifle cartridges. I guess the first topic I want to talk about is cartridges that people love and hate or hate and why they love or hate them. So to me, I love all rifle cartridges. <laughs> I don't know why you would hate one um, or why you would, I mean, I, I definitely could see why you would love one more than others, <clears throat> but you've got people that like, there's only one cartridge. And if you don't have that one cartridge, then you've got the wrong cartridge. I did a video series just a while back, actually when I first started my channel, about the perfect all-around rifle cartridge. And <clears throat> I started out with a big list and I narrowed it down to one, one that actually won the, the whole thing. But I had a comment, I think in video two or three, where a guy saw it, tuned in, didn't see the 270 Winchester highlighted or maybe anywhere on my piece of paper or whatever the case. So he just didn't hear me talking basically about the 270 Winchester. He was out, which is fine, but he, it made him, I guess, upset enough, or he found me dumb enough that he needed to explain to me why if the 270 wasn't right there, or if it wasn't the one I picked, or if it wasn't the one I'm talking about, or the one he's seen on the piece of paper, then he wasn't gonna watch anymore, and, and he felt strongly enough about that to tell me in a comment, <laughs> which is fine, but I just, I don't understand that. So let's just start there. The 270. It's not one of my personal favorite cartridges, but I have a ton of respect for it. Been around since 1925, <clears throat> made famous by gun writers, um, especially Jack O'Connor. Traveled the world using a 270 and killed game, killed medium and large game in multiple continents with it. Um, it's, it's, it's cool. I've got no issues with it. I've got no negatives. It's just not my cup of tea. Generally speaking, I prefer more efficient cartridges, um, with a few exceptions, but I generally will lean more toward the efficient side of a cartridge than just power side. But a 270 is fantastic. I've got no issues with it. I just... It just doesn't do a whole lot for me. Maybe it's because it's so good, it's become boring, you know? There are cartridges like that. They're just so good that it's not interesting to talk about them after 100 years. <laughs> kind of like the 30 6 However, I do like the 30 6 more than a 270, and I still like to talk about the 30 6 When I first started to listen to my uncles talk about Rifle cartridges when I was young, it was extremely fascinating to me. I just loved to just listen. I had a million questions and I would just continually ask them, what's more powerful, this or this, this or this? You know, and, and I would just wanna know which is bigger, this or this? And they would explain to me, well, the caliber is bigger here, but the case is much bigger over here, like a 308 versus a 270. Obviously, the 308 is a 30 caliber. It's a bigger diameter bullet. But your 270 has more case capacity. It's a bigger case. And just learning about all that kind of stuff, it just fascinated me. And from those early, you know, conversations that I had, it became apparent to me that my favorite was the 30 6 That's from no experience shooting it, just from hearing about all the different rifle cartridges my very first sentimental favorite become a 30 6 I did, you know, five or 10 years later, did a little research project. This is before I even knew what ballistic coefficient was. And I remember looking at a, a trajectory chart that would tell you how much the bullet would drop and how much weight it would retain at different yardages and so as far as energy, I'm sorry, how much energy that it would keep and I was comparing a 130 grain 270 bullet 
with 180 grain, 30 out six. And I discovered that out of the muzzle, the 270 is killing it. It's so much flatter. It has less energy, but it's way faster. And then as it, as it goes the first few hundred yards, even up to the first 400 yards, it's so flat and, and much faster. The 30 out six has more energy, but it's, it just drops more, not quite as fast. But then you continue that on and you go to a thousand yards, it's a different story. In fact, at a thousand yards, that 180 grain bullet has lost less energy. It's retained more speed. And it actually is flatter out at those extreme long distances than that 130 grain 270. And that blew my mind. And I didn't understand it was because of the ballistic coefficient of a 180 grain 30 caliber bullet versus a 130 grain 270 bullet. I didn't understand that, but I did notice that, that happened as far as just looking at stuff like this. So once again, I decided that I like the 30 out six. But there's nothing wrong with a 270, it's fantastic. <clears throat> so I'm gonna list a few cartridges that me personally, I've never really cared a whole lot about. Um, they've never been, you know, they've never tickled my fancy. They've never really just been the cartridge for me, but they're amazing. And 270, seven millimeter Magnum, and a 300 Magnum, the long version, you know, the Win Mag, the 300 Win Mag, the seven millimeter Rim Mag, and the 270. Those three bullets, I just have never had a strong desire to own. I've never had a strong desire to um, just get, you know, in, invest in and really care about. I have owned a seven mag and a 270, but I actually sold them off before I really shot them much. Um, I shot the seven mag the most, and it wasn't that I didn't like it, I just needed money at the time and I sold it. But I just, those three rounds are universally praised as some of the greatest rounds of all time. And I don't disagree, I think they're fantastic. <clears throat> so I kind of have a bias against them, but I have zero hate for them. I have love for them. And I've actually heard people say before, not very many, but one or two that they didn't like the seven mag or whatever the case. But 99 out of 100 people that I have ever talked to that owned a 270, a 7 mag, or a 300 mag, loved them. Thought they were phenomenal. Um, had tremendous luck and experience with them. From actual real world, real world use, if I can say it, they performed perfectly. Like I said, 99 out of 100. And usually the one out of 100 that didn't like him really didn't give him a chance. They, they shot one load, probably factory, and it didn't work out and they just sold it. So even though I'm not really a huge fan of those three cartridges, there's no hate here. I think they're fantastic. You know, and, and some of the reasons why I don't favor them, I guess is, is nitpicky reasons. I just like more modern case design. So a 270 short mag, to me, is cooler than a 270. It's not better. You know, it has more energy and velocity at the expense of more recoil. And so I don't think there's that one is better than the other. I just personally like the 270 short mag better. I have a bit of a problem with the belts on Magnum cases. And it's ultra nitpicky, and I know that it means nothing. So this is just a personal preference. I, this is, you know, like if, I, if, if you look at the evidence and just be conclusive about overall what people have said, the belt has no negative function. It doesn't do anything. It, it, it has no negative properties. All the proposed negative properties are not really true. And once again, just ask people that have had a 7 mag. Just ask people if they've had a 300 mag. Just watch YouTube videos about African um, Plains game PHs. And anytime someone brings a 300 mag, 
fantastic, fantastic. Um, anytime someone brings a seven mag, great. You know, there is no negatives. So I think we just need to have a mindset of let's not just hate on certain cartridges and love on certain cartridges. I might not prefer those three. They're not my cup of tea, but I have enough sense to know they're phenomenal cartridges and they have proven themselves a million times over. So speaking of hate toward a cartridge, 6.5 um, Creedmoor. Now I've done a video about this, so I'm not gonna go through it all. I know people personally that hate it, but generally speaking, the reason they hate it is because it's overhyped, which I agree. It got way overhyped. And if you're a hunter and you're just thinking about, you know, speed and power for hunting, it's, it's not going to be as fast, potentially, as a 260. It's going to be about the same as a 6.5 Swede that's been out for 125 years, 130 years. So it's this new kid on the block, but yet hunting-wise, it's nothing new. It might even be a step down from a 260. Um, <clears throat> someone like me, who's a big fan of the 6.5 284, it's definitely a step down from that as far as hunting. And I, and I get that, but my gosh, guys, the 6.5 Creedmoor is, is fantastic. It, things don't become that popular for not a good reason. You might have an initial, you know, rising to the top and, and be, and have a, you know, your, your, your 10 minutes of fame, but it's, but if there's nothing there to substantiate the greatness, it's going to fall by the wayside. That's happened many times before. 6.5 Creedmoor is still here. It was designed as a target round, okay? So if you get a 6.5 Creedmoor knowing that it was designed for shooting at targets, knowing it was designed for superior accuracy, designed knowing that it was gonna have a fast twist rate and the chamber was gonna be big enough to hold the heavier, longer BC, the high BC bullets. If you understand that, there's a lot to like. And as long as you're, as far, as far as hunting, as long as you are understanding its limitations, there's nothing wrong with a 6.5 Creedmoor. And I, and I can't wrap my head around why you wouldn't like it. Like I said, I, I know people that do not like it. And I get the, the hype, but come on, it's a great round. I'm a big fan of the 6mm Creedmoor. I've never owned one or shot one. But just doing research, I think it's fantastic. Which brings me to another little point here. So I've done a video series on the best all around, the most perfect best all around rifle cartridge. I literally did not know what my answer was going to be. I ended up, it was a five part series. It was the seven millimeter odd eight. Later I did a, if you could have two rifles and it's not just one, what would be the best combo, the best duo? And it was, I came, I come down to the six millimeter Creedmoor and the 280 Ackley Improved. And then I said, if you were to expand it to three, I just did one video, I would say the 300 WSM, the seven millimeter on eight and the six millimeter Creedmoor. Now <clears throat> that's, I actually did a lot of research for those videos. It wasn't me just putting my opinion down. That's ultimately what happened. But I really did research those cartridges in the ballistics a lot. And I literally, on all those videos, did not know where I was gonna go with it. I did not have an answer. I could, when I started out, I kinda had maybe five or six that I thought would, would be good contenders, but I didn't know where I was gonna go. And I didn't know who was gonna win. And on that first one, I really, until the very last video, had no clue. So, I've become a big fan of the seven millimeter odd eight. I've become a big fan of the 300 short mag of the 280 actually improved in the six millimeter Creedmoor. Before I did all those video series, those four cartridges in particular, I just didn't care about. Um, especially the 300 short mag. I didn't like it for whatever reason. I've, I've always been a fan of the 270 short mag and I could have cared less about the seven 
millimeter short mag and the 300 short mag. After doing those videos, I'm a big fan of the 300 short mag. In fact, if I was, if I do get a Magnum one of these days in 30 caliber or bigger, that's probably what I'll get is a 300 short mag. I'm a big fan. And I look back and I realized there was no good reason that I didn't like it before. Kind of like I did a video about the 243, how I thought it was a woman's cartridge or a kid's cartridge. I just didn't like it. I didn't have any good reasons. Now I'm a big fan of the 243 big fan of the 300 short mag and a huge fan of the seven millimeter on eight. I just, you know, sometimes after you do some research, you become fans of cartridges. But at the beginning, if I would have told you my, you know, top five or 10 favorite cartridges, none of those would have been on the list. So that should at least tell you I was very honest in how I went about it. You know, and my big thing was, is it an efficient cartridge? And can it do everything you want it to do? I wasn't initially a fan of the 308, but it was the first deer rifle I ever used. And so literally my, my uncle had a, I think it was a Savage 99. I think that's right. It was a lever action Savage and it was in 300 Savage. And he was gonna let me use that for my first deer season, hunting white tail deer. And he took me out to a little bench there and had me shoot at a target. Now this was literally the first gun I ever shot. And I couldn't hit the broadside of the barn with it. It just had open sights, it didn't have a scope. And after four or five rounds, him and my other uncle were just like, let's get a different gun. He's, he, he can't hit nothing, he's, he's, he's terrible. He went and got a um, 308 NATO, or your 7.62 NATO, which basically is a 308. And it was a Mauser 98. It was a Spanish Mauser, an FR8. Pretty cool little gun. It's kind of a compact Mauser um, made in Spain, but it was in 308 basically. It had a peep sight on it. Did not have a scope, had a peep sight. He explained to me how to use the peep sight. And I made some really good shots, made a decent group, you know, not like MOA or anything, but for my, my first day ever shooting a deer rifle, shot it pretty good. And then I killed a deer my first deer season and it was a long shot. Now. There was luck involved. <laughs> it was a doe <clears throat> walking away from me. Now I'd shot twice and missed, so let me just explain that. The third shot, I took my time, really thought about it as it was walking away from me, kind of quartering away, and then it, it stopped and turned at probably 250 yards with a peep sight, my first deer season ever. On the third shot, I shot and killed it, went right right through its heart. <clears throat> Next season, killed a, a little buck with that 308. Later in my life, I got my own 308 and I've killed a uh, couple deer with it. Let other people borrow it. Um, it's, it's killed a lot of deer. Um, so I've just become a big fan of the 308. Now, <clears throat> the 308 to me is good because of what it excels at but it's not ballistically that much better than any other cartridge, but it's just enough. So like, you know, I, I've said before, I think it's a perfect white-tailed deer round. Are there more powerful? Yes. Are there flatter shooting? Yes. I could go through on this. There's better in every way, but it's just what you need and nothing more. So became a big fan of 308. Um, Became a big fan of the 243. I've always liked the 22 250. Um, I remember going into a gun shop. I was a teenager still, and I had made up my mind I wanted a 22 250. And I told the guys, hey, do you have a 22 250 that I can buy? And they immediately started to try and talk me out of it <laughs> and, and have me buy a 223. Um, which I was put off by that. I thought, I came here to buy a certain caliber. Why are you changing my mind? And I remember them telling me how, well, it, it has, the 223 has a better barrel life and this and that. And I was like, guys, I come here to buy a 22250. And then I realized they didn't have one, but they had some 223. So that was the whole point. And I remember something else about that visit while we're just sitting here talking. I remember that they had a whole rack of SKSs and they were super cheap. This has been a while ago. And they tried to sell me one of those, those, those SKSs at, 
you know, as, as well. And I just, I was offended. <laughs> I was just like, guys, I don't want an SKS. I don't want a 223. Now, looking back, those SKSs to, in today's market would be very expensive. And I bet they were like 150 bucks or something. So looking back, I wish I would have bought all of them. But anyway, um, but getting back to the main point, cartridges, you know, here's a few cartridges um, that are some of my personal favorites. I've, I've already mentioned some. I love the 65284. So my uncle built a custom gun from a Mauser 98 action, and the caliber he chose was a 284. And I just remember growing up, and one uncle always took the 284, and the other uncle always took a 30 6 And the one uncle's wife took a 270. So there was, I just remember 270, 30 6 284. Now I know that the 284 is not common, <clears throat> But to me, growing up, yeah, it's common. And then I found out later, no, it's not. It is not common. And But he had built a custom bolt-action rifle in it. But I've always thought it was a good round. But I remember him telling me when I was a kid how the 284 will always outperform what the book says. And the biggest reason for that is it was designed to be put in a short action instead of a long action. But if you get an intermediate or a long action, you can really pull that bullet out, you can seat the bullet out, you can do a lot with it, and it has pretty good case capacity, and it'll always outperform what the book says. It's a, it just, it does a great job. And, you know, anything in your seven millimeter has a wide range of bullet options, and he was just a huge fan of it. To this day, he's a huge fan of it. That's still what he takes. He actually got rid of that one, made another custom rifle, and he still uses it to this day, and it's a fantastic round. Well, then I, years ago, would read stories about the 6.5 284, just a neck down 284. And when I was reading those articles and those stories, at that time, it was big into the competitive 1,000-yard match scene. <clears throat> and it had, it had the world record as far as tightest group at 1,000 yards. So later in my life, I built a custom gun. Not quite as nice as my uncle's, but yeah, I built it slowly over years. When I had just a little bit of money, I'd throw in a new trigger, get a little bit more money, I'd add a new stock, whatever the case. Um, it's in, it's not as nice as what his was, but it's pretty nice. Um, but I'm a big fan of the 65284. It's only downside to me, well, there's, there's, there's two. Number one, the barrel life is, is low. Now I hunt with it and I occasionally shoot at targets with it. <clears throat> I've probably shot 120 rounds through it. And that's just playing with it. I've just never had the time really to really shoot it a lot. But it does have a shorter barrel life. And then the second thing is you just can't go and find ammo for it. You know, it's just, you pretty much have to hand load for it. There are some that make ammo for it, but it's just not very common. But I'm a huge fan of it. If you like the Creedmoor, it does everything the Creedmoor does, but better. <laughs> but it's just not as common, and it's just and it's just not gonna be as easy to get the ammo for and shoot. It goes right in between the 6.5 Creedmoor and the 6.5 PRC as far as power. Um, but those two have just become super popular. You can go easily find a gun. You can easily find bullets for them. And the 65284, no. So that's the downside. But personally, it's one of my, my absolute favorites. Uh, what, here's a cool YouTube video to watch. It's by Gunworks. Just search for Gunworks Africa 6.5284. That's a phenomenal video. That's one of my favorite YouTube videos I've ever seen. That particular Gunworks guy, he made five shots all one shot kills and dropped five African Plains games animals with that 65284. And now I'm a big fan of the 270 short mag, but I don't have a lot of experience. In the last year, I have bought one, but we are in an ammo crisis right now, a shortage. 
gun shortage. You, you just can't get anything. I have finally found a gun, bought the gun, got the rings, got the scope I wanted, put it together, and I can't find stinking ammo for it. I finally got components for it, 145 grain ELDXs. I've, I, I have powder. Um, you can't find powder right now, but I've had some from years ago, so I have powder that'll work for it. I can't find the cases for nothing. <laughs> I mean, I, good luck trying to find brass for any WSM. It doesn't exist. Um, now, if you want 308, my gosh, you can get 308 is so stinking common. You can go to Bud's Gun Shop or Midway USA and they just have page after page of 308 ammo. You can go to Bass Pro and they have an entire section of 308. It's all 308 and 556. You want to get 270 short bag brass, good luck. Not going to happen. A friend of my uncle's was down in Texas hunting, and I don't recall what he was doing. I think he was bow hunting in Texas. But he was at someone's ranch, and he was in a blind, and down on the floor of the blind was 10 270 short mag cases. And he picked them up, and he brought them home, and he gave them to me, and I thought, hey, I've got 10 cases now. <laughs> so all I need now is to get, actually, I just bought the dies of, little bit ago. So I've got the dies. I just need to get a couple more things and then I'm ready to actually hand load and shoot that gun for the first time. So I had no personal experience with the 270 short mag, but I just, I just like it. And I've always liked it, but the thing that got me over the top was the 6.8 Western. Now you might say that doesn't make sense. The 6.8 Western is probably going to replace it. And I agree with you, but Remember, I hand load, so I'm going to be able to hand load bullets for it. 6.8 Western comes out. It's basically the 270 short mag, but, you know, with a faster twist rate barrel, um, they, they shorten the, the case down just a little bit to be able to get longer, higher VC bullets in it. And so you can shoot your your 165, your 175 grain high BC 270 caliber bullets, which is really cool. And I'll be honest with you, had I found the exact gun, I, I bought a Winchester X XPR, is, is what I bought. Had I been, been standing there and saw the 6.8 Western and the 270 short mag at the same time and had to pick one, I probably would have picked the 6.8 Western just because I think it's gonna be more popular. But I couldn't find one. But I was pretty happy getting the 270 short mag, and here's why. <clears throat> so, now I'm not going to be able to shoot more than 150 grain bullets. I understand that. So that's the downside. But a 150 grain bullet out of a 270 short mag is good. <laughs> it's real good. And honestly, do I want to shoot a 175 grain bullet out of, a, out, of a two, out of a 27 caliber round? Maybe. I've kind of already got stuff that I could do that with. You know, I've got, if I, if I wanted to shoot heavier bullets, I can do that. It would be nice to have the versatility. So I'm not downing the 6.8 Western. It probably is objectively a little better. But the advantages of the 270, you actually have more case capacity. Because in order to still go into a short action, but yet have those longer bullets in the 6.8 Western, they had to shorten the case a little bit. The 270 short mag case has not been shortened, obviously. So you can put more powder in it, get that 150 grain bullet, which is still a good BC bullet, not as good as the heavier ones. But as long as you have a magazine that's pretty long, like the Winchester magazines are like 2.955 inches, they're basically three inches, um, you can seat that bullet out pretty far and you can really stoke it up. So I have a feeling that that 150 grain let's just say like an Acubon Long Range or a Burger VLD or, e, or that 145 grain ELDX, which I already own. I think those things can be dynamite. <laughs> so I'm excited and I, I'm a big fan of the 270 short mag. Um, the only thing I need to know is when I get my first bullets together, I need to chamber them and measure my lands and, and, and the jump and all that. I'm hoping that there's plenty of room in there so I can see 
seat the bullet out. Because I think the magazine's fine, I'm just not sure about the chamber. But anyway, um, but I do think that the 270 short mag is, is going away. I think it's on the downhill slide. And I think that the 6.8 Western is going to take its place. But I'm still a big fan of the 270 short mag. This is just me talking about rifle cartridges. I think I've rambled on long enough. I'm around 30 minutes now, so I'll probably close it here. But uh, I guess the overall point of this is... <laughs> Do we really need to argue about which is better? Now, if we're just talking, I love it. Like I'm a nerd, I, I wanna talk about rifle cartridges. I want you to tell me why your cartridge is so awesome. Even if I don't like it, I, I want to hear about that. So I'm not against cartridge talk. In fact, I'm for it. I wish there was more of it. I think it is important. But the debating and the arguing, <laughs> come on. Why? Just answer me this, why do some people are against a certain caliber or a certain cartridge and so for another one? I mean, I can understand that this is my favorite, personal favorite, had the most experience, had good luck with it. I just like it better. That's all fine and, and, and good. But to just absolutely say that cartridge is a piece of trash. They, I hate that cartridge. It's worthless. I mean, come on, really? So I don't understand that. So I dislike all cartridges and I like talking about cartridges. So I don't know if you have anything to say or disagree or agree with me, leave in the comments below. But I've had fun just talking about cartridges. So until next time, take care.